Okay, I am excited for this episode. Today, we're gonna go over the definitive guide for what you should look for when you start TIG welding stainless steel. I've got five of the most important points that I teach my students when I'm working with them. So grab a pen and some paper, get ready to take notes. We're gonna get into this one right now. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna look for when we start learning to TIG weld stainless steel is our edges. This is absolutely one of the most important areas that people don't think to look at when they first learn to TIG weld stainless steel. The edge that we're gonna look at is this edge right here that I have highlighted. You can see the arrow pointing at it. This would be the edge where the filler material transitions into the base material. The edge working out exactly the way we need it to is extremely important to the results that we are gonna get. It's also gonna tell you a lot about how you're doing with a few things. Now, if we have any problems with a lack of fusion or anything like that, which is basically the filler material not blending properly into the base material, this is going to severely compromise the strength of the welding area. And this can actually introduce an opportunity for corrosion to occur. That's right, even with stainless steel, weaknesses and weak points like this can be a hot spot for corrosion to form over time. Where I live, I live extremely close to the ocean. That's right, this is my place right here. You can see me welding. Bzzz. Now, when I was learning coming up in the trade of welding, I was working on boats and all kinds of marine grade TIG welding for years and years. I had to repair many things that had been welded improperly, not by me, of course. And one of the most common things that we had to fix and deal with was the subject of corrosion. Yes, even with stainless steel. Having the edge of your weld properly blend into the base material is gonna be the best way to increase the amount of strength that you're gonna have with your project as well as eliminate any chances for corrosion to occur down the line. We always wanna see a smooth transition between the filler material and the base material like this example here. We can see adequate amounts of filler material being used, but we still see a good transition between these materials looking nice and smooth. This example right here, this is an example of inadequate fusion or lack of fusion. You can see how the line on the edge looks much more rigid. We don't see a smooth transition between the two materials anymore. The filler material is kind of just sticking up and standing on top of the base plate. This little area here is gonna be something where small amounts of contamination or corrosion can form over time. And given the right circumstances and even more time, this corrosion can become really severe. This can cause the welding strength of this area to diminish over time or in some circumstances fail completely. Now having a lack of fusion can be caused by using excessive amounts of filler, for example. This can be caused by uh, using a filler material diameter that's too big in relation to how hot you are welding. Or this can also happen due to inadequate heat input. Now on the flip side, we can also see edges that look like this example here. We can see that these edges are almost excessively blending into one another. Obviously this can look like extreme overheating or the weld is getting too big. Now when things get obviously too big or too hot, this can also compromise the strength of the welding area. Obviously we wanna avoid something like this example here as well. Now, no matter what joint we are doing, we want to see edges that look like these ones here. We can see the filler material is still substantial enough to properly fill up the joint. However, not too much that we see problems with blending or lack of fusion. Whether you're working on a flat surface, like a butt joint or something like that, we want to see this transition nice and smooth, exactly the same way as if we're doing a lap joint, a fillet joint, outside corner, whatever. This is gonna help give the weld the best durability and strength, as well as help to prevent any little areas where corrosion might form over time. Now, paying attention to the line on the edge of the weld is extremely important. And this will fit perfectly with the next detail that I'm gonna to introduce to you right here. And this detail will be stepping. So in case you're wondering what the heck I mean about the term stepping, stepping is the distance in between each step where the filler material is added to a weld. This pause right in between each movement is what I refer to as stepping. Now the distance of stepping that you are using is gonna be extremely important when you start running full passes with stainless steel. Doing things incorrectly with your stepping distance is gonna to lead to having big problems with your edges and we just talked about how important those edges are. One of the most annoying things that you can deal with, especially with stainless steel, in my opinion, is the subject of craters. This is essentially where the center of the puddle is gonna be falling out, creating like a dimple in the center. This is just an example here you can take a look at. This can lead to cracking down the line. This can also introduce an area where corrosion can form as well later in time. Like we talked about, that is obviously something we want to avoid. So when we step too far apart with our stepping distance, this is gonna introduce the risk of exposing the center of each puddle. 
If we expose the centers, we run the risk of exposing a dimple or a crater. And another thing that's super annoying is this is gonna have a direct effect on the quality of your edges. Like we talked about, we wanna see the edges of our welding look nice and straight, like these little cuties right here. We want proper blending between filler material and base material. As we start to step too far apart, we're gonna to start to see this line on the edge go in and out and become inconsistent. So all the work that you're gonna to have to do to keep this line nice and straight is gonna become much more difficult. Like we talked about, obviously stepping too far apart can introduce some problems that you are gonna to have to deal with. The same can be said for stepping too close together. What can happen is stepping too close together can cause somebody actually to travel at a slower travel speed. As somebody starts to slow down with the travel speed, you're gonna to start to see the overall heat input increase because somebody is obviously traveling a lot slower. The heat input into the workpiece is gonna increase and cause it to overheat. This example is what we wanna see right here. We can see that the stepping distance is far enough apart that the line on the edge is nice and straight. We can see that each puddle adequately covers the previous puddle to prevent any centers being exposed. This is a really important detail that you wanna work on. Make sure that the distance of stepping you are using is not too far apart, however, not too close together as well. This is gonna help you to get those great looking lines for sure. Okay, so controlling the details we've talked about in this episode so far is extremely important. And if all of these details are done well, you're gonna get great results with this next thing that we're gonna talk about here. And this is going to be the heat affected zone. The heat affected zone is gonna be this area right here that I have highlighted in this diagram. This is gonna be the area directly surrounding the welding deposit. A lot of people don't actually know, but this is absolutely one of the most important areas that you can look at after you finish a weld. This would indicate how you are doing for your overall heat input, as well as your ability to control it. As the overall heat input starts to increase, obviously you're gonna to start to experience overheating. And when this happens, this can be reflected in the heat affected zone. What's gonna happen is that when the heat input into a workpiece starts to increase excessively, the size of the heat affected zone is going to increase. Obviously when this becomes extreme, overheating occurs. The heat affected zone is gonna reflect this by having excessive oxide form. The oxide is gonna cover over the welding area as well as the area surrounding it. Take a look at this example here. When we have good control of the heat input, the heat affected zone is going to be smaller overall. And when somebody controls their heat input really well, not only is the heat affected zone going to become smaller, but it's gonna become very consistent from start to finish. Now, essentially, this is kind of gonna be the same as when you are working with TIG welding aluminum. Looking at the cleaning action surrounding your aluminum TIG weld is gonna tell you a lot about how you did for your overall heat input. Looking at the heat affected zone with stainless steel is the exact same thing. So essentially, with the heat affected zone, not only do we wanna see things relatively small and consistent, but we want things to look nice and shiny and reflective as well. So talking about how important the heat affected zone is to TIG welding stainless steel, this is gonna directly relate to the next thing we're gonna talk about here, which is gonna be the finish. Now, looking at stainless steel TIG welding can be absolutely awesome to look at. It looks amazing. When things are done really well, it looks absolutely incredible. But what is common when most people start learning to TIG weld stainless steel is this here. <laughs> Yuck. It's so, okay, my friends, everybody starts out with stuff like this, but here's a great question. Why does this happen? What you see here is this gray, crazy looking stuff here. This is a formation of extreme oxide, which has covered the weld as well as the welding area surrounding it. This can be caused by either extreme or excessive heat input, lack of gas coverage or supply, or a combination of both of these things. What we want to see is something like this here. When working with more intricate welding joints like this example here, we want to see examples that are nice and shiny and reflective. Looking at some examples like this one here, we can also see that there will be occasionally coloring on the welds. These are really crazy how these occur, and honestly, in most cases, when you look at them, they are beautiful. But you need to know that the formation of colors on your weld is actually a formation of oxide as well. Now what happens when something has been treated with a perfect amount of gas volume as well as treated with a perfect amount of heat input into your workpiece? The welding is gonna look like this example here. It has no oxide on it. It will look gold, it will look straw colored, something like that. You're gonna see no oxide present on it. Now we already talked about how important it is to control the heat affected zone. Looking at an example like this, we can see that the heat affected zone is very controlled. Now, in a lot of circumstances, having color on your welds is actually a big no-no. 
But again, these are specific to different applications of TIG welding in the industry. And in my case, I actually worked in a lot of circumstances in welding production where a little bit of color on the welds was completely fine. Obviously, like you can see, this subject is a bit situational depending on what kind of job you're doing. But a general rule of thumb that I like to go off of is this. As we want to avoid an appearance of the surface that looks like this here where extreme oxide has formed, we can see that the surface is dull and not reflective at all. As I mentioned a few minutes ago, extreme oxide is going to indicate that a few important variables have slipped out of control. We want to see the finish looking something like this here. But if you're just starting out and you're experimenting with trying to control your heat input, a little bit of coloring when you're practicing is absolutely fine. If you have color, basically all I say is that as long as the surface of the welding area is still reflective or shiny, and you can keep things under control so that the heat affected zone is still somewhat narrow or consistent, these are gonna be things that help you out much quicker so you can get better results that you can go show off to your friends and brag. <laughs> okay, so we have learned a lot in this episode. We still got more to go. This leads me to the fifth point that we're gonna talk about here, and this is very important. But honestly, it kind of sums up everything that we've talked about all in one tip. And this is gonna be something that I refer to as the overall consistency. I would say the subject of consistency is something that makes stainless steel TIG welding look amazing. Looking at this assortment of different joints that I've done here, you can see that everything kind of just looks the same as one another. Everything looks nice and clean, everything looks organized. And this is from focusing on all of the important details that we've talked about in this episode so far. Looking at different examples of different joints here, we've talked about how important it is to have properly blended edges. All of the edges that we're taking a look at here have been blended into one another smoothly. We have a proper transition between the filler material and the base material with everything that we see. This is gonna to help to create a consistent look with the profile of everything that you might wanna see on a project. And again, across all the different joints that we're looking at here, another thing that looks very similar to one another is the stepping. We don't see any work that has been stepped out further than other examples. We don't see any passes that are crowded together with a stepping distance that looks different from the other stuff. Consistency with the stepping that you are using across whatever joint or project you are doing is what is going to help to get you the best looking results overall. And again, as far as all the examples that we are looking at right here, we can see that the heat affected zone is consistent and controlled. We don't want any areas that are flaring out crazy wide. We want the heat affected zone to follow every welding pass with the same consistency. Looking across any project that you might do or different joints that you're going to practice, the finish should look relatively consistent for whatever it is you're doing. Everything should look nice and shiny. We shouldn't see any jacked or crazy looking oxide. Again, a little bit of color is absolutely fine for practice purposes here. We want to make sure that we see everything looking relatively shiny and reflective with the finish. All of these details carefully put together across different joints that you may practice, as well as a project that may have multiple different types of welding on it. These are things that are gonna to help to build the best looking consistency and make your welding look awesome. If you are just getting going with TIG welding stainless steel, or if you're looking to build some better consistency with fundamentals, I dropped a free online TIG welding class for stainless steel. This is a legitimate class that I teach in person to people. Taking it from me in person costs money, but I packaged it and put it together in an online class that you can take for free right now. The link is in the description below. You're gonna love it. Go check it out. It's gonna be an absolute blast. Do a random act of kindness for a stranger today. My name is Dusty, Bill and Chill. We will talk soon. Peace.